Hey there and welcome to day 21. Today is the last video of week 3 and we're going to dive into supplements. What I've pretty much accumulated in the last couple of years to get me from super stressed out and burnouts every couple of months thinking it was normal and not being able to even pick up a book and focus on that book to now being able to study properly, read a proper book, having even more stressful projects and being able to function as a normal human being, being able to focus on, uh, on conversations. So going from how I was to how I am right now, some of these supplements uh, have calmed me down, have helped me stabilize myself to the point where actually I'm not using most of them, only in some kind of cases where it's again too much and I have to stabilize myself again. So you're gonna notice that most of them are to reduce stress and they're all holistic. I'm gonna be covering some smart drugs as well, not the drugs specifically, but the nootropics, the ones that are still healthy. And uh, yeah, so let's just fly into it right away. So, as you can see, we'll start with the traditional ones. Uh, so here you see vitamin D. These are really basic ones. So I use the, I use the capsules and they look kind of like this. And I take about, uh, so the prescription by the FDA is about one pill a day. But uh, they're very good, for instance, when, you want, when you're sick and you have a cold and flu and you want to get out of that. So then I use about two or three or four. Uh, how do you know when you're overdosed on vitamin D? Well, it actually your head starts to hurt. So I would test out in the beginning with how much so I would do one, and then I would do two, then I would do three, not at the same day, separate days, and then see where my head starts hurting. And uh, usually it depends when I'm sick and haven't been uh, outside a lot, then sometimes five even stabilizes me uh, back to normal and also helps again with stress and everything because if your vitamin D levels are low then your immunity is is gonna be not very well fed and that's why vitamin D is crucial when you're going into reducing stress the second thing is of course these are all these brands but you can also get other ones so this is pure magnesium uh, and you can see it here this is try to get as pure as you can unfortunately these are the only ones that I could find but this is how I take my magnesium pills at the moment and uh, what do I use it for exactly well so like I said in one of my videos previously whenever I'm struggling with sleep it's usually because my magnesium levels are low how do I know that well it's actually pretty simple because at the time when I was doing this, um, I did blood level testing and I noticed that in the moments where I was struggling to fall asleep, my magnesium was low. So one of the first biohacks that I use, if you would call it that way, is to take one magnesium pill or sometimes two magnesium pills like these um, and see what that gives me. Usually I fall asleep. And now that we're actually on the sleep thing, let's go to this one. So this is called uh, GABA. Let me focus on that. So this is called GABA. And these are regular pills. They're, they're this kind of capsule pill. And uh, so these pills, once magnesium doesn't work, I go for GABA. So GABA stimulates a hormone called GABA in your brain. And uh, it pretty much, imagine you've, I had this amazing amazing sleep and you wake up completely rested so GABA actually does that with you it's it kind of kickstarts that amazing sleep so I take this for instance uh, on a long flight and if I can't fall asleep like it's pretty much impossible for me I take this this is way better than those sleeping pills on prescription because those ruin your cycle this is more uh, holistic and there isn't a lot of research being done on this. Um, I literally went to the pharmacy to ask them what kind of research do you have and it was the only supplement that was completely blank. 
It's for that reason that I try to use it scarcely. But if you're completely stressed out to the point that you can't sleep, this will be your solution after magnesium doesn't work. And uh, then we go to this kind of thing. And this is this is activated charcoal. If I can get focused on it. Yeah, okay here. So this is activated charcoal. And what is it exactly? So you have it in powder form or you have it in this kind of capsule form. I don't know if you, you'll be able to see that. So once you open it here, you start seeing these pills. It's really black, but it's pretty much a pill like that. Um, and what it does is, so they give this when you, in, in the hospital, when you have a drug overdose because it attracts all the toxins like if, you, if you've ever gotten drunk or something like that um, and you're throwing up or anything this is actually the cure to hangovers because what it does it attracts all the toxins the good and the bad the bacteria as well to the gut and uh, pretty much that's how they cure the hangovers so activate charcoal is the one thing this is my biggest hack the biggest biohack that I have the one thing that I always travel with. If I don't have this, I know I'm gonna have a bad time. So I always make sure that I have this with me. For instance, let's assume you're going for a holiday to family or friends, and by some accident you eat something really bad and then you have this food coma. Activate charcoal helps with that within 20 minutes. This is literally the one thing that I always recommend. And when I recommend this uh, to clients that are struggling with something, I start noticing if this works, that means they're, they have a lot of food toxicity uh, in them. Um, but of course, we do more tests to figure out if that is actually the case. So another thing, this was advised to me by, at the time, my doctor. And this is grape seeds. So it's just simple capsules. And apparently grapeseed really helps with stress levels. So you can look into that, uh, but this was really interesting for me and it actually really did help me uh, in some way, as long as you use it consistently. Um, another supplement that I used to do when I did a full-time martial arts was, if you can see this. Yeah, okay, so this is vitamin. Uh, B complex, which is the B1, B6, and B12. So what this does is, most of the people know what this is, it, it pretty much kickstarts your energy. Um, so this is not good if you're obviously stressed out because you don't want to kickstart anything. Uh, you wanted everything to come natural. But for instance, when you're when you had a really hard training session the next day, you want to meet up uh, with some people and, and have energy. This is something that most people use. Another thing is krill oil. So krill oil looks like this. And this is the, if you take omega-3 and you make it way better, that's krill oil. Because cr the reason why is krill oil is less um, toxic than omega-3. Because the omega-3 are the, the distilled from fish and some of the fish are in the Atlantic Ocean and so all the crab that comes from, from Norway and farming and everything, uh, all that toxicity goes into those fishes. Krill oil, because they're smaller, krill is smaller and, and many other reasons, um, absorb less toxicity which means that the krill oil is actually going to be way better omega an omega consumption for you than the omega-6 that you get in the pharmacy. So this one actually really works and I've had a client that was really struggling um, with itchiness on the legs and everything and uh, by taking krill oil she, she started I think because it's a good fat consumption so she started uh, stabilizing her body again to the point where her allergies started subsiding so this was actually a really cool hack. I use this to get my fat intake when uh, for, for fish consumption if I don't eat enough fish because there isn't good fish around me. Um, but I, that's what my doctor also recommended. I use it in periods of three months. Um, and so, some other people recommend it to do the whole year round. I use it in periods of three months. Um, this one, vitamin C, everybody knows this. 
So vitamin C obviously stimulates uh, glutathione so that pretty much your immune system gets better. When I get sick, I always jump to vitamin D and vitamin C. It seems to help a lot. Um, and then we get, first we get to this one. So this is, this is for some of the people of, uh, of you that are struggling with um, mouth sores. Uh, they're really prone to that. So for instance, um, if I, I, every couple of months I get some kind of sore in my mouth since I was, I was a kid. And this is some kind of mouthwash. Well, first of all, it makes your teeth also quite white because it really gets down to it. It doesn't have alcohol in it. Um, and you kind of pull some stuff in here and you do the mouthwash. And, um, and the sores seem to just vanish after two, three days. I'm not talking about, um the the sores that you get from sexual transmitted diseases i'm really talking about if you get like some kind of sore because you've been touching something wrong with your tongue or anything um that kind of stuff so not uh, the the cold sores that you get from sexual transmitted diseases so this is if you're struggling with that so i always have one as a backup um then we go to the simple thing let's put this here so some of the simple thing uh, is, this is pretty much just gum. So the problem with gum, and this is actually if you're gonna research this. So the problem with gum, here I'm just taking a gum to eat. And uh, the problem with gum is that it has most of it, and you can check this when you're looking for ingredients. It has a, a thing called aspartame. And if you look at it here, It'll say that instead of as uh, it doesn't use aspartame. There's it literally says no aspartame, and it also uses another the thing called xylitol. Xylitol has been proven to get your teeth a little bit cleaner. But the main thing is that it doesn't have aspartame, and there was research being conducted that aspartame actually can can really um, take care of some really bad diseases up to the point where I think. It, it, caught, it could have even, but I don't notice it completely because the research is really un, um, underground and you have to really look for it and some of them was not completely tested. But it, it does say that it stimulates cancer or something like that. But again, look at the research yourself and read uh, what it is. But when I read that research, I pretty much stopped consuming aspartame and switched to this eBay brand for um, in Germany that pretty much has no aspartame. And like you see, I bought it in bulk. So because I bought it in bulk, um, it actually goes way cheaper than normal gum in the store. But for me, the main point is that my gum doesn't have aspartame and then um, I know that I'm not gonna get all the bad stuff from gum and can still enjoy them. So then we go to the next part, which is Inderol. I don't know, yeah, here, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So here, Inderol. So Inderol is a prescription drug, but I actually got this prescribed because of stress. So what does it do? It's a, it's a beta blocker. A beta blocker, um, it lowers your blood pressure and your heartbeats. So when you're really stressed out, um, a doctor might prescribe beta blockers for you. Uh, and, and the issue with that is that you should be really careful when doing sports because the whole point of this stuff is to lower your heartbeat. So when you go out and do sports or extreme sports and you don't respect what this pill is doing to you then you're just wasting money for nothing but this thing actually really helped um to to calm myself down a little bit uh in combination with grapeseed oil so i do recommend this uh, go to your doctor and ask them if you are stressed out whether you need something like this um, and then the next thing is, let's get a little bit more simple before we go into the technical stuff. So I use, I don't drink coffee, I don't like the taste of coffee, so I use uh, cacao tea from Bulletproof. And uh, it's a really good tea, it's quite expensive, but it lasts me a long time. So it's actually worth it. Um, and in the long, and I think like it lasts me a couple of months if I'm really honest. And what I do, is I have this little thing here that I just 
put my tea in, put it in here, um, and do my bulletproof tea with cacao tea, which is chocolate, which I love. And um, that's how I kickstart uh, some of my days. Um, and sometimes I do something else where I get more protein intake and then I don't get the tea or then I get soup or something like that or something more with protein. So this is the tea that I consume as much as possible when I have time. Now about the soup that I was talking about. So as you can see here, I have a plastic jug. The one thing that you need to know whenever you're buying plastics is this little thing here. It has to be BPA free. All of my bottles that I have that have that are normal plastic, I've pretty much thrown out and I've replaced them with these BPA free uh, plastics. What is BPA? So uh, B posphenol A has shown in research that it stimulates um, a lot of estrogen. So when you're when you have a lot of that estrogen in your food, that really can unbalance your hormones, and you don't want to ha uh, that to happen for for many reasons. Among many, just health uh, aspects. So I always have a jug like that for, and this is. I love this thing. This is a Philips uh, soup maker. I think it's li it's literally called that, a Philips soup maker. And as you can see here, you have certain options. And so you click it on, then you click mode, and this one, the first one, is just a smooth soup. And this one is then a little bit less smooth, but in essence what you do is, um, and this is my recipe. I put uh, four to five tomatoes in it. I put about 500 milliliters of water till here. Um, sometimes I put garlic, uh, most of the times not, and a lot of salt. And, um, and then it just mixes and maybe some other vegetables in there as well. And then I just click on it and an hour later I have soup for the next four days. Oh, and also put butter in there and sometimes MCT oil. And then I pretty much have a really high fat soup for the next four days whenever I don't have time. I just warm it up um, on the fire. It's really fast, really efficient, and I get my fat intake of the day. Um, how much fat? So usually I put like 200 grams maybe of fat um, because it, it's over a span of four days. Uh, always carry gold or grass fed butter. Um, and then we go into, there's a lot here. Okay, so apple cider vinegar. So many of you just know apple cider vinegar because it's apple cider vinegar, but not many might know that it's actually a really cool biohack uh, by, uh, given to me by a nomad friend. It's literally the most common apple cider vinegar that you can get in the supermarket. And uh, the story that I heard, uh, and the reason I started getting this and using it for myself is, so one of my buddies used to be in the army and they would walk, I think like 125 kilometers a day. So, or, or over a span of three days, I don't know what it was exactly, but it was a crazy number um, with all their gear and everything. And what would happen is everybody would get blisters on their feet. So this nomad friend of mine uh, told my buddy to, to get out apple cider vinegar, put it in a bucket, and then just uh, put his feet in there. And it was like this most miraculous fix you could have seen. So apple cider vinegar is always in my, in my uh, yeah, cup, cupboard, because, just because of the fact that if something happens blister-wise and will recover really fast, um, I just, pour apple cider vinegar over it and it really helps. So before we go into this one, let's go into this one, which is Himalayan sea salt. So again, the issue like with krill oil is uh, the Atlantic Ocean and all the crap that's being dumped in there. And I've actually talked with a European, uh, when we work with the Council of Europe, I talked with the European Union that are responsible for, for everything that's happening in Norway and, and, their, and their way of treating and waste, uh, treating the water and dumping the waste in there. And it's just, 
it's a really terrible thing what's happening there which means our fish the salmon and 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 the salt is actually high in toxicity and this is the reason why if you consume a lot of salt from the atlantic ocean your blood pressure goes up but if you consume the same salt the pink himalayan sea salt you're going to start noticing that your blood pressure will actually start dropping and that's where um I'm not very keen on all these um, governmental food dietists and stuff like that because they don't actually test out the food for toxicity. So Himalayan sea salt is the only salt that I consume um, and it's actually helped my blood pressure which is very high uh, to stabilize it a bit more. This is um, the next thing, this is chamomile, chamomile extract. So chamomile extract is really interesting and I've only um, recently discovered it a year ago. So chamomile, so you have two. You have the Roman and you have the German. Um, so my girlfriend is German, so I have the German obviously. Uh, and I don't know how the Roman is exactly, but the German is, I, I know, anti-inflammatory. So the Germans really are keen on using this. I've, I've never heard of this before I actually met her. Um, and so it's anti-inflammatory and it helps a lot with calmness. So I knew that chamomile tea in the evening helps you because it calms you down. The chamomile extract is a little bit more clean than the tea. And so it gives you the antifungal properties. It gives you the... So having this before you fall asleep or when, when you're sick uh, is really, really good. It helps you heal faster. So I really recommend chamomile extract. Um, it's just some drops that you put in here and that's pretty much it. Okay, then we go into the smart drug, uh, drugs. So let's go first for ashwagandha. So ashwagandha is one of those things that not many people know. And I've discovered this about three months ago from the same nomad friend guy that um, told me about the apple cider vinegar. And ashwagandha, really interesting because it's from India. So I, that's the reason why I would never have heard of it. And uh, in high doses, so be really careful when you buy this. In high doses, it kind of has the same effect as steroids. Uh, but it's, it's all clean. It's a supplement that is holistic. Um, it's natural. So uh, just don't go in high doses. But if you take the recommended dose, it really reduces stress. Um, and it's an adaptogen, which means it improves uh, physical energy and athletic abilities and stuff like that. Um, and the most important thing and the reason I take it is it increases immunity to, to if you have a cold, if you have infections. Uh, and a funny side effect is that it increases fertility in your sex drive a little bit. Um, it's really good if you take it in the right doses for reducing stress, the right doses on the box. And it seemed what it does specifically for me is when I take it, my my head clears up. So the brain fog kind of goes away. So I really, really like ashwagandha and it's a recent discovery that I've been using. Um, I'm really happy about it. So I have the capsules, but I think the powder is a little bit better uh, because that's what my buddy uses. So that's ashwagandha and then the next thing which is quite controversial because people don't really understand what it is Which is creatine. So creatine is uh, What those bodybuilders use this is not steroids. This is creatine So creatine from research doesn't have that many side effects Actually the most common side effect that you'll get is you'll have to you will want to pee a lot so that's actually the most common side effect that you'll get from it. But in short, creatine from research apparently boosts your IQ. So whenever I was in exams a couple of years ago, or whenever I'm in a big project, I'm using creatine um, over a, a couple of weeks just to get uh, my IQ a little bit higher, my memory a little bit better. But also whenever I'm in high training periods, it seems to recover myself faster, which means I'm getting two kind of benefits. I can perform better and recover faster uh, if I have to bike a lot, if I have to train a lot for martial arts or stuff like that. Then we're going to put these three next to each other. Why? 
Well, simply because these are nootropic stacks, but this one I really did not like. I bought this one because I thought um, it would make me better, but I got really bad side effects from it. I'm not, I don't think this is FDA approved at all. Uh, so you can, you can hear it's quite full still. I think I took one or two. So that was my experience from it. It really seemed to bother me. It really seemed to actually hurt my stress levels to the point where um, I couldn't handle and the focus was all over the place. So Siltap uh, was a little bit better. Siltap made me sometimes focus and then two or three days later my body got used to it and it didn't work for me anymore. So this is kind of a natural stack that's promoted by the Bulletproof uh, team as well. But to me, I had mixed results. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it doesn't. Um, it kind of had some kind of effect like relatin, but a little bit weaker, uh, which meant that, for instance, on relatin, I actually wanted to study or do something, something really cognitive. While on Siltep, it kind of, if I'm focused on something, I'll just be stuck with whatever I was focused on. So I, I would always take it once I'm actually reading something. Alpha Brain, a lot of people say this is really good because this is a nootropic and this is a nootropic. These are actually protecting your brain and not degenerating your brain. At least that's what they say. But Alpha Brain just didn't seem to work for me. Um, I became really tired taking Alpha Brain. So some people have results with it. I didn't. Um, I have more results with Siltep, but not enough to buy more batches. And then we go into the real uh, neurotropic, which is aniracetam. I don't know if you can see this. So aniracetam is one of those drugs that, it's not a drug, it's a neurotropic. So you can buy it on eBay. It's developed by a Belgian, and that's why I like it. But it's not FDA approved, and in the European uh, Union, you have to get a prescription to get this. But that being said, it is well studied. It's from the 1970s, so it's been here for a while, it's well studied, and it's proven it has low level of toxicity. Um, and a lot of biohackers use this because it gives them the protective edge uh, on their brain. And people that have Alzheimer's from the biohackers at least use this almost daily because right now it's being investigated as a neuroprotector um, for people that have Alzheimer's. So it's a really, really interesting concept. I put this in my tea sometimes. It's very important to have this consistently, so if you take it for one day, you're not gonna uh, know too much effects. But my memory gets better from it, and I get more clear from it. It does have a weird taste, but it's uh, it's one of those racetams that really does clear up your head and makes you focus. So it's kind of a, a softer thing than Siltep, but really effective still. The last one, I'm gonna close with this one, and this is, yeah, this is Rilatin. So this is actually a prescription drug if you have ADD. So I got it as a prescription from my doctor. Um, I don't have ADD, I was tested, but I got it to test it out whether it would work for me, and it did work for me. However, it was so aggressive, and the side effects are so vicious that you really need to listen, not to the doctor, because he'll tell you to take two or three a day, uh, but to your body. Test one, see what the results are. I had such a kick the next day, the bad way because of this. So to me, it was not very much worth it. Um, over the long run, Rilatin is the thing that really put me over the edge and made me, this is the reason pretty much why I had to have all these other stuff to stabilize me. So over the long run, Rilatin was horrible. And everyone from my biohacker friends that use Rilatin would attest to the same claim. So Rilatin, if you do what, like once a day uh, for one day or two days, it's fine uh, to get some stuff done. I stopped using it because of the fact that I have all these other stuff. That's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time for the next day.